Michigan State 69, Marquette 60 in a massive game. Great performances all around for our Spartans. And yes, 25 straight turnings for Tom Izzo. This is his 15th Sweet 16. And you, you guys all thought Mr. March was dead. <laughs> our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, how are you all doing? I'm doing quite fine myself. I had an okay weekend just watching the Michigan State basketball Spartans commit themselves to greatness yet again. Nice little win on St. Patrick's Day against USC. And then, well, what is that, a, a, a two by your name, Marquette? A two seed? Well, I hope you weren't planning on doing anything with that because we are going to run you off the court in Columbus. Um, we're going to talk about that. Duh. Um, who you guys thought was the MVP of this weekend? Just, you know, bringing up again that Tom Izzo runs things around these parts. But we're also going to talk about every single great performance that Michigan State had from not just Sunday's game, but also the whole weekend as well. But hey, first, please rate, review, and subscribe to this here podcast or YouTube channel. We do this five days a week here on Lockdown Spartans. Or, hey, if you want to keep doing this during March Madness, Michigan State, well, we'll keep on doing seven days a week then. But yes, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com if you ever want to reach out. Let, let's talk about this game. Um, and where to begin, I quite frankly don't even know myself uh, because there were so many, so many best parts of this game. Uh, God, just the emotion in the game, the emotion shown by the players, the emotion shown by Tom Izzo, especially after such an up and down season, what has happened on the court, obviously what has happened off the court as well, and how great these guys have represented the school through the ups and the downs. They get rewarded with a sweet 16, and that is thanks to hard work, great coaching, and some gutty performances that we haven't seen in a while. So number one, the best part was, was was that even an upset that we just saw on Tuesday? I get that it's a seven versus two game. And yes, Michigan State was two and a half point underdogs against Marquette. But I, I got a hard time using the U word here of an upset because Michigan State looked to be a team that would win that matchup maybe eight out of 10 times. And I, I don't think I'm just feeling myself here because Michigan State had a lot going against them on Sunday. Uh, look, poor three-point shooting. I think they're two of 16, which is lousy. Uh, on the flip side, how about Marquette? Came into the game as a 35% three-point shooting team. They shot 40% from three on over 20 attempts. A.J. Hogard had to set, sit the last six minutes of the first half on the bench thanks to foul trouble. So, Ticky-tack fouls here and there, but you know what? I, I think it kind of evened out at the end, especially with that nice flagrant that uh, Marquette decided to commit that kind of turned the game around. But yeah, Michigan State just looked like the more well-coached team, the team with better players, and well, we're going to get into it here, but team with a lot better defense, and that seems to win things when March rolls around, as the old adage goes. So yeah, let's just start talking about that too, is maybe the best part of this whole weekend, especially Sunday, was the defense for Michigan State. Now, if you've listened to any podcast episode in the days leading up to this weekend, we talked about Michigan State, their adjusted defensive efficiency in the last five games of the season would have ranked outside the top 200 in the nation. Things were looking really lousy for our Spartans, especially, which was weird because during the season, they had a pretty solid defensive unit. And well, for this game, Adjusted defensive rating of 79.6, their fifth best rating of the year. And I, they looked every bit of it as well. I'm actually shocked that the numbers say that was just their fifth best defensive performance. And maybe I'm prisoner of the moment. Maybe I'm a little too high on the Sweet 16 supply. But that looked to be the number one defensive performance because they threw the clamps down on everyone. Um, Marquette forced to take a lot of tough shots. Now, unfortunately for Michigan State, Cam Jones makes tough shots like yeah he did it against Michigan State and you think oh my god this guy's hitting circus shots well that, it's kind of what he does but all over the board life was very difficult for Marquette namely namely 
Big East player of the year, Tyler Kolek. I was terrified of playing this kid. Um, seven points, okay? Six turnovers. That ties a season high for Tyler Kolek. Two of eight shooting for him as well. And this is, God, it has to be maybe my favorite part. I think I've just talked myself into it here. Is just what has happened with the defense. And we have been pretty confident with this unit too that, hey, if you've, again, listened to the show, we talk up and down. The guard defense is great. You have fantastic personnel with A.J. Hogard, with Jaden Akins, and, oh, yeah, a guy by the name of Tyson Walker as well. So, pairings come out, USC. All right, they got a great guard, Boogie Ellis. Maybe our strength can limit what they can do. All right, second round, probably playing Marquette, Big East player of the year, their point guard, very good player. Maybe you can kind of keep them somewhat at bay. How about just giving both of those guys their worst games of the season in back-to-back -back performances. I mean, what else can you say about the defense? Uh, they were fantastic. So, yes, defense wins championships or, you know, sometimes just tournament games, if you will. But, yeah, I mean, just fantastic, fantastic work from that trio. Also, hey, solid defense in the front court as well. I mean, we're going to talk about these guys later this episode, but Carson Cooper, okay, pretty solid job walling off uh, Oso Igadoro. For the most part, uh, Mati Sissoko had great glimpses of defensive effort and also a lot of them with four fouls, like that block. Again, we're going to get to these guys later here, but the defense was superb. And maybe also that, okay, this is going to sound really stupid, as if we haven't said a lot of those in the history of this show. But maybe, oddly, bizarrely enough, maybe one of the best parts of that game on Sunday was that MSU had, like, a B minus game on offense ish. I mean, it, it was not great by any stretch of the imagination. Your strength this whole season has been three point shooting. You are a top five three point shooting team in the nation. And you throw up two of 16 from three Jaden Akins over the whole weekend. One of 10 from beyond the arc. All right. That's a 43% shooter. Joey one of three this game, but also like I look at that three number. He only took, three attempts on Sunday after he lit the world on fire on Friday. I digress. Tyson Walker, 0 for 5 from 3 on the weekend. He's another guy that's north of 40%. Malik Hall, 0 of 5 this weekend from 3 as well. And honestly, like I you know, saw some chatter about Malik Hall. I don't think he's doing terrible. Sit him. Guys, he is a 38% three-point shooter. Like I know he's not high volume, but he has shown throughout his career he can hit a three-pointer. And none of the threes that he took on Sunday – were guys in his face fading away from 29 feet away. Like, they were good shots, just didn't fall. And, okay, Malik is hardly the only guy that can say that. But guess what? It didn't matter. It didn't matter that MSU looked like they were trying to throw a beach ball into a basketball hoop from three-point land because they won by a combined 19 points. You strip away a team's biggest strength, and they are still winning decisively? That kind of makes me feel pretty good going into a second weekend of hopefully two games at Madison Square Garden. But yeah, I, so oddly enough, how poor MSU shot the three-point ball kind of makes that a little nicer that that's really how good you guys are. You guys don't even need your biggest weapon and you're going to be A-okay. I mean, it was just fantastic. Um, we got a lot of individual performances to get to here in a hot second. We're going to start with the man, the myth, the legend, Tyson Walker. Uh, goes without saying, but first, I need to talk your ear off about Built Bar. That's right, we're talking the best protein bar in the land. And gang, the Built March Madness bracket is here, and we know you have a favorite bar or puff. And now's your time to make it count. Go to builtmarchmadness.com to vote for your favorites. You already know it. I will be voting for the Churro Puff Bar. And God, if that's not a one seed, then I don't know what is. And also, guys, listen carefully when you vote. For your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Lockdown listeners will get a free box of Built. And not only that, but one Lockdown fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try Built is the best protein bar in the land. I would never lead you astray. Come on, guys. Unless we're talking best bets. But no, this is actually sound advice here. So run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now. To vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick. Let's, let's keep talking about the Sweet 16 berth as if there's anything else to talk about. Um, MSU hired a new defensive back coach. 
Salgado used to coach for the Bills, but we'll get to him in April, I'm sure. Anyway, let's keep talking about this basketball game. Tyson Walker, um, look, there's an analytical way to break his game down. Uh, there's also just a person with two eyes who really loves co uh, competitors. Way to look at this. And Tyson Walker confirmed has that dog in him. Certified Spartan dog right there. And that's been a question right it's up and down throughout the whole season of where's the leader on this team. And we have seen games throughout the year where, uh Oh, Michigan state kind of let that one fumble away. Cause they don't have a leader. Well, Hey, but better late than never kind of seems like Tyson Walker is that guy 35 combined points over the two games, but 13 of those points in the last eight minutes and eight seconds against Marquette. When it was closing time, when no one was hitting a three point shot, Tyson said, fine all right yeah i'll do it i'll do it okay guys everyone just calm down and it's just the way they did it too because marquette was running the press and that kind of slowed michigan state down getting uh set up in their uh half court sets and they fell behind schedule and uh oh the shot clock's running around and it turns out the last two seconds of a shot clock are tyson walker's favorite time to play basketball he was getting it done tough takes through the lane that patented little 12 foot 14 foot jumper that he has i despise lawn twos unless tyson walker is now taking them for the first time ever i watched a michigan state player take a lawn two not in my head whenever tyson walker did it and well it felt like more times than not it was paying off in spades especially that late in the game when it was closing time for our team and also hardly shows up on the box score yes you could have your steals but tyson walker's defense just out of control. I, we talked about it last segment, shutting down Kolick, Boogie Ellis. I, I, I just i am obsessed with watching that guy play defense, whether it's on ball, off ball, sauntering in the background, playing like a defensive back sort of style, uh, just picking guys off. And what a way to put the exclamation point and the expletives on at the end of the game with the pick six dunk. Sure, because Tyson Walker just always throws down like that. Uh, first dunk of the season, I believe, in his career as a Spartan as well. But, man, I, you couldn't think of a better way for a kid like that to end a game. And now, hey, he gets to go back home, play in his state of New York. He's from Long Island. MSU is playing at Madison Square Garden, obviously. So maybe we can get some more positive juju going his way. Uh, Joey Hauser, speaking of, playing in front of a, a crowd that knows his name pretty well. Um, not maybe even for the best reason. Joey Hauser, as you know, Marquette transfer. Left a sour taste in some people's mouths. Uh, not all of them. I don't want to speak for all Marquette fans. But uh, the Boo Birds were out when Joey Hauser was announced. And he just responded with, okay, fine. I'll just do a double-double. Uh, 14 points. And yet again, how many times have we said this this season where you, you turn around, you look at the box score, and holy crap, he's got a few handfuls of rebounds. And today he had 10 of them. So yes, it wasn't just getting it done from the free throw stripe, which he did superb at seven of seven, but man, oh man. Um, when things were not going well at the three point line and MSU was like one for 11, I looked at my dad uh, or my brother. I got to watch a game with both of them. Very fortunate. And um, for who I said it to, I was like, it is going to go one of two ways as MSU is one for 11, either water is going to find its level and MSU is going to start hitting a few of these shots. Or this is going to get contagious. And I think we already passed that point. I was just trying to talk myself into something good here. Or it's going to get contagious and no one's going to hit a shot the rest of the day. I mean, kind of saw that 2018 against Syracuse in Detroit. But hey, Joey Hauser made it when it counted in the quarter as well. So you talk about timely three-point shot. There it was right there. Um, and also... Had the fans cheering his name at the end of the game. So you start the game getting booed by the Marquette fans. How mean of them. Uh, but then, hey, you're getting lifted up by your state fan section that was out in, in droves today. That sounded like a loud crowd on TV. He said, quote, I didn't even know what to do. I couldn't control it. Once I got off the court, I kind of broke down. It's been a long journey. And to hear my name chanted in an arena like this, you really don't know what to say. And that is really awesome i mean to, to, i mean that goes without saying that he got to appreciate that but it's um eye opening as well because joey hauser pretty stoic guy right you can't get a lot by joey hauser you you could tell him that hey your dog just got run over and or hey you just won the powerball lottery you'd probably get the same facial expression on him he keeps it to himself and the fact that he 
you know, had that crack of emotion there. Well deserved too. I mean, that, this is awesome to see it for the kid that has had one hell of a journey, not just at state, but also in college as well. So good on you, Joey Hauser, and hopefully more good things to come. Um, we've made it way too long without still talking about Mati Sissoko, who had his best game since November, uh, the Champions Classic. Perhaps he was a lightning rod. Uh, I, like it, he, I, I literally couldn't. I literally could not believe what I was watching on my television because Mati has really, really has had some rough patches here in his junior season. That goes without saying. And also, those rough patches have snowballed into kind of confidence derailing moments as well. And this isn't just, you know, me, some idiot with a microphone and a television saying this from 90 miles away from East Lansing. No, like Izzo's talked about that throughout the season as well, is that we're lacking a little confidence here from Madi. So someone forgot to tell him to leave uh, or to, you know, take that shortage of confidence onto the court today because eight points, 10 rebounds and the, the two blocks in the final minute out of control. Now, was it a goaltend? Who gives a rat's, you know what, what I have to say? It wasn't, according to the refs, but it was mighty close and just super active on the boards. Again, his defense was great going up. I'm not going to talk about how legitimate all four of those fouls were that he had. I'm sure some of them were, but I just thought he played sound fundamental defense against Oso Igodoro, who has a field goal percentage of higher than 65%. Oso's game is nice and they kept him at bay i mean also still scored uh in the double digits but it could have got a lot worse they forced him into some awkward passes as well and god it was just Madi and carson cooper too i mean let's just mention him really quick as well uh 16 minutes you 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 told me before the season that hey this kid on the img b team is going to get 16 minutes in a second round game in march madness i would Probably think things are not going well, but he looked the part too. He looked every bit of the part. The strides he has made this season are substantial. And you don't have to look too far back to think of another great game against USC. Lit it up as well. So yeah, Carson Cooper has been a staple uh, and just so important to this team. Goes without saying. Uh, Malik Hall, this is another guy just like Madi who has had some rough patches. And it's called out. Um, you know, by, by talking heads like myself, uh, by the fans on the internet, uh, message boards, all that stuff. I don't know how much of it gets to him, but I hope he really appreciates the love after this game as well. Again, we talked about the three point shooting. Didn't make a three pointer today, but I didn't hate any of those shots. Again, a 38% shooter on the season. He was left wide open. Shoot those Malik. One of these times they're going to eventually go in. Hopefully it's at Madison square garden, but at the end of the game, offensive rebound. MSU calls a timeout. Tom Izzo was fired up as you've ever seen him. Tyson Walker bucket in that possession to go up seven. I mean, that Malik Hall offensive rebound put the nail into the coffin. So, Jaden Akins, not a great offensive stat line. And he kind of struggled too against USC, but who cares? His defense defied anything he did negatively on offense to the point where he was a net positive for this weekend. Um, this is something we've always talked about with Jaden Akins, is that his wing defense is superb. And whether it's on ball, off ball, he just sticks to the guys and makes life miserable for them. So, And that kind of bodes well, maybe a little bit. We'll get more into it this week. But Kansas State, they got a really solid guard as well. Maybe you could do it three times in a row. Tennessee, pretty guard predicated as well. Uh, Florida Atlantic, I got to get a little more into them, but I'm just going to assume they got a good enough guard to go to the Sweet 16. Um, and let's just talk about one other guy, too. Let's talk about one other guy, too. This guy's not a player. This is Coach Tom Izzo. Most wins as a lower seed in March Madness history with 16. And once again, he backed up his old saying that, you know, um, I'm just paraphrasing here, but he tells his players, you give me the first game and I'll get you through the second game. Okay, he, he's only done that 15 times in the opening weekend. And I also want to mention this stat as well. Seven times in Tom Izzo's career. They have lost immediately in the Big Ten tournament. This is how they've responded after those seven times they get axed immediately in the Big Ten tournament. Two first-round knockouts in the NCAA tournament, all right? Just two of the seven times. Three times he has led his team to a final four. One other time, a Sweet 16, or make that two other times a Sweet 16, and hopefully this could be a fourth final four as well. But yeah, when March is rolling, even if there's a little hiccup in the Big Ten tournament, 
the Hall of Fame coach has the guys cooking in March. Um, needless to say. So, yeah, uh, he said this quote, too. Just wanted to mention it here. Quote, it's been a long year. I'm just happy for our guys. It's a very simple quote. Nothing groundbreaking there. But really, I, when you look back at the last month, not just of Michigan State basketball, but Michigan State in general, and him being as public of a figure as he is for this university. I mean, I, I, I love Izzo near and dear, like a family member to begin with. But, like, how how can you not just feel incredible? for him um it, it has been a journey again off the court goes without saying the whole tragedy but also on the court too i mean th this team has faced adversity some of it self-inflicted some of it not though with a lot of injury issues throughout the year so here you are you're one of the 16 teams remaining in march you got kansas state thursday night um oh boy oh boy and it, it is really hard not to have a twinkle in your eye looking at next weekend perhaps because again michigan state I, offensively, I didn't even think played all too well. You know, they got it done somehow, some way, but they did it all without their biggest weapon and their defense is it's undeniable. It's great. And oh man. Oh, I hope, I hope everyone, I hope, I hope everyone in the Big Ten enjoyed that little two-year hiatus uh Michigan State had in the tournament because Mr. March is back. I'm sorry to say it. Mr. March is back. Uh, hope everyone took advantage. Of those two years, Michigan State was down. Now, once again, we're the only team still carrying the Big Ten flag in March Madness as every other team just gets butchered. Um, so, yeah, in those two years where Michigan State was a little down, hope everyone that uh, made a Sweet 16 in the meantime still continue to go to the tournament. I uh, hope everyone made deep runs, got some Final Four banners. But, no, things are right in the world again. It's Michigan State back on top. So, don't you forget it. Don't don't you forget it. Please. This is this is an adult conversation now. All right. FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. Let's go ahead and look to Thursday. It is a pick 'em between the Wildcats of Kansas State and our Michigan State Spartans. Jump on FanDuel right now. They're gonna have also futures for hey, odds to make the final four, all that fun stuff. And if you are a new FanDuel customer. First of all, what have you been waiting for? Come on. I mean, this is the best time of year to get in on the action. But second of all, it's going to be sweeter for you because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Bet on everything from money line, point scores, three-pointers, drain, still a whole lot of futures for March Madness. And FanDuel also lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlay. So do not miss out on the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. <clears throat> and this drink of water will be sponsored by, uh, oh my God, it's an empty glass. I didn't fill up water before. Okay. Well, everything isn't entirely coming up. Uh, Matt, today, that's okay. We took enough wins today as it was. Um, oh God, you idiot. Who forgets water? All right. So on Twitter, I asked, hey, who was the MVP of this weekend? Uh, just over the two games. And it goes without saying, a lot of you voted for Tyson Walker. Uh, but everyone got a shout out. Like AJ Hogard got a shout out as well. I know we didn't talk about him all too much. Um, but yeah, again, he also had a solid weekend as well. And I think there's all there, also another gear that he can reach as well. Jaden Aikens got a lot of love. Kirk Gibson's mustache got a shout out, but let's just start with Tyson Walker. Andy Isaac writes, it's Tyson Walker. You can't win these games without him. He essentially turns horrible half court sets into his own personal and one session. It was an outstanding team defensive effort today and Mahdi's late game heroics deserve mention, but Tyson Walker is the MVP. That is something we've talked about already is that, yeah, late in the shot clock where um, it, th there was really no reason for things to end okay. I, yeah, Tyson, I mean, he did this in the Iowa game too. That faithful, you know, that Iowa game that might, I'm really just deviating offline here. Um, that Iowa game really helped, I think. Did it not? Obviously, you know, at the time I was really nervous about seeding, how it's going to affect the seeding. Clearly didn't matter. You got to the Sweet 16 anyway, but maybe that was a blessing in disguise because this team goes Full bore balls to the wall for all 40 minutes now. Like, you're up eight late in the game. That's fine. I'm going to steal this ball and I'm going to dunk it because I know I'm never letting the foot off the gas. Anyway, let's get back to MVP talk. Cool Copper writes, uh, Tyson Walker, 35 points with no turnovers, and none of those were on threes. Those points are gold, plus every shot seems so clutch. Hauser is a close second. 
that he is. Carl writes in, Tyson plays the game at 1.5 speed when he's in his bag. No live spotted there. I can't believe the finishes he had at the rim. Uh, not just today, but also against USC as well. I, I guess Carnival shots. And they looked, well, okay, effortless. I mean, he's cooking right now, so hopefully we can just keep that going. Uh, MSU fan writes in, Tyson Walker is the easy MVP pick, and now he gets to go home. But I feel amazing for Mati to finish the game today. He needed that. We needed that. That's the stuff March is all about. That it is heroics, especially from a guy you least expect it from. And I'll be the first, second, and third guy to raise my hand and say that I doubted him going into March. I did not think that he'd be a factor whatsoever. Maybe grab a few rebounds here, but okay. How about just two game icing blocks at the end of the game? Also, shout out to the back-to-back free throws too in the second half when uh, things were getting a little wonky early in the half against uh, Marquette. So Aaron also writes Tyson was the MVP, but Madi, the unsung hero with defense, rebounding in the two key blocks that had my three-year-old daughter asking what happened. Well, Aaron, I hope you told her greatness was happening and March magic was happening. Um, Sean writes, Walker hit some huge shots down the stretch, but that four-minute defensive stretch by Madi was it. He knew it too. You could see it at the end of the game. That block was Tayshawn 2.0-like. That's right, the Tayshawn Prince block on, I believe, Reggie Miller, I think it was, back in 2004, which is... I don't even want to think about how long ago that was now. Uh, We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep vibes high here. Joey Hauser also got some mention too. Jason writes Hauser because of the combination of the two games. His rebounding for this game was huge. Also hit a massive three when nobody could hit one. Again, that just gets so contagious. Seeing just clank, clank, clank from beyond the three-point arc. And uh, Joey dialed it in from that baseline three and gave Michigan State a cushion. They never gave up. Um the rest of the game. Uh, Jaden Aikens got a shout out. Goblin writes in, gotta be Aikens. He came up a little short on the offensive end of the game, but he played lockdown D all weekend and did all the little things too. He said, or sorry, he says the best offensive rebounding guard I've seen in a long time. Great point. Uh, Carson Cooper with a shout out. Jer Bear saying Carson Cooper energy minutes all weekend. Just that little extra when the team needs a spark, didn't shy away from the moment. And I know this, yeah, this is going to sound crazy, but like one of my five favorite plays, maybe even my top three favorite plays of just this weekend, the Carson Cooper tip slam. I believe it was Tyson Walker laid it up, went a little long, and then, okay, here I am, the trailer. I'm just going to absolutely yam this thing uh, through Earth's crust. And yeah, that that got me very excited against USC. So yeah, Carson Cooper balled out. Miles also writes in, since everyone is saying the obvious answer with Tyson, I'm going to go with Carson Cooper. For freshman, he grounded out some tough minutes and grabbed some keyboards that were important to the big win versus Marquette. Way to put tough opponents through the chicken coop. Ooh, I like that. There we go. Also, bet anyone uh, didn't have Steven Izzo on their bingo card for this as well for MVP consideration. Austin writes in, Steven Izzo more than likely was both Boogie Ellis and Tyler Kolick in practice and obviously prepared this team to lock them down. I'll blindly agree to that. That's right. And then we're going to end the show on, again, Tom Izzo, Mr. March, the, the man himself. Uh, just deserves all the credit in the world, especially when Stooges, like me, uh, maybe question some things during the season, like why didn't you get a center in the portal? Why didn't we use all of our scholarship allotment? Well, I, okay, I guess the whole head coach is a guy that you should trust. Who knew? Uh, Elijah writes in Tom Izzo. He has been able to get this team firing on all cylinders except for three-point shooting. That is a fantastic point. All Tom Izzo did this weekend was put his team into great spots. He had uh, Michigan State prepared to go up against a USC defense that kind of changed their philosophy on the fly. All season, USC going under ball screens, letting teams shoot three-pointers over them. USC flip-flopped that. And I don't even know if USC knew that they flip-flopped that because they were also getting lost a lot in the first half on defense. Turns out that... When you change some philosophies at your 33rd game of the season, things go a little backwards. But, hey, on the MSU side of things, the Hall of Fame coach side of things, they had the boys ready to play. And, yeah, he did everything right. The team did everything right except making three-point shots. And that's something that you really can't pin on Izzo um, unless you're just a real certified hater. Anyway, Elijah goes on to write, Tyson was otherworldly as well. He always seemed to make the clutch play we needed, and he's shown that he's not scared of anyone Scary sight heading into the second weekend. Let's all head into the second weekend together, gang. We're going to try for some big guests here. We got Graham Couch lined up this week. I'm reaching out to a few others as well, but you already know it. 
going to be breaking games down. We're going to be having fun. And we're going to be talking about games going on with our team this week because, again, this is Michigan State. I know everyone. No, oh, two years in a row, no Sweet 16. Okay. I'll, 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 go go watch your NIT game, okay? Well, you don't have one anymore. What happened? You're up six with a minute left. Anyways, just the, 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 the haters, pipe, pipe down a little bit, all right? The, the big boys are back, so let's all enjoy this together. Love you all. Let's charge into the Sweet 16. Go Green.